Hello everyone and welcome to questions and answers series based on the computational finance course. Today we have question number 12 out of 30, which is based on materials from lecture number 5. The question of today is, what is the impact of jumps on implied volatility? So suppose we have a simple Black-Scholes model, so geometric Brownian motion for our asset, and we would like to include jumps. Uh, we know that in Black-Scholes case, we will have uh, just a flat implied volatility, so there is no smile or skew. Will there will be some skew or smile if we add jumps? This is the question about. So what we do, we will follow, we will consider the Mertens model, so extension of the Black-Scholes or the geometric Brownian motion, where we have additional component which corresponds uh, to a jump. So um, in this is the the stock dynamics. So we this is let's uh, let's take a look what's happening here. So we have a part which corresponds to jumps. Uh, also this part here. So I will explain in a second what this part is about. So here what we have we have a jump generator. So it's a Poisson process. Poisson process tells us about uh, whether a jump has happened or didn't or hasn't. And then we have a, a multiplier. So this part tells us about uh, the direction of the jump, whether it's a positive or negative, or and also shows us how large is the jump. So of course, this will be telling us how the paths, continuous paths from Brownian motion, then start jumping. Then if we have this part, then we also notice that there is some kind of deterministic component here in the drift. And this co deterministic component comes from the compensation, so it's a, a martingale compensator from the uh, Poisson process. So it's a compensated Poisson process. The details for the relation, how to derive this expectation of uh, e to j minus one from here, you will find in lecture number five. This question, this lecture or this question, however, it's about impact of implied volatilities of jumps. So what is the impact of jumps on implied volatilities? So in general, this is the generic formulation for the process. Uh, if we consider jumps, um, we could also have here, uh, let's say, Bytes model, where the volatility will be driven not only by a constant number, but it will, could be also driven by a stochastic process. However, here we have a very clean model because we know that the geometric Brownian motion doesn't generate any skew or smile, so we only can focus on, on the effect of jumps. If you would have Heston model, for example, and we would add jumps, then we could argue what is the impact of uh, Heston model parameters and what is the relation to the jumps. Now it's very clean because we have a model without jumps, without any skew, so we can analyze the impact of the jump, J. So here the, the, there are different choices for uh, jump uh, J. Here this is the magnitude of a, of a jump. Um, the, the standard approach is to take the Mertens model where J is driven by a, a normal distribution with some mean and some variance of standard deviation sigma. And then we have then we have three additional parameters in the framework because Poisson process, it is driven by the intensity and of course by time. And then we would have additional two parameters corresponding to the jump magnitude. So you see that if we have Black-Scholes model, we have only sigma. We, if we add jumps, we have additional three parameters in the standard Merton model. Uh, here is the dynamics under the log transformation. So actually you can see that uh, we start, actually if we start with the log transformation, then we would have only J times uh, Poisson uh, increment. And then if we find the dynamics for the stock, so we know that uh, X T is equal, to, is equal to log of S T, then this is the relation between the two processes. Then we see also how this jump part will be modified after this transformation. So this is important to keep in mind. Um, okay, so uh, the jumps will have impact, of course, on the realizations, on the trajectories or paths of our stochastic process. So on the left-hand side, we have a, a paths for X. So this is under log transformation. So we see there is a, uh, there is a continuum of, which comes from the Brownian motion. So we have here in some initial value, which you can see it's a hundred. So it's a log of a hundred. It's a very continuous and then jump happens. So the paths jump either upwards or downwards, depending on the realization from this normal distribution that we have, uh, we have used. Okay, and so you can see upwards on downwards uh, jumps. And then if we look at the stock itself, 
um, it's a continuous and then uh, with number of jumps. So each path will have a number of uh, jumps depending on the Poisson process which drives the events of, uh, of jumps. So the question now is what is the impact if we calculate options based on those paths and calculate later implied volatility based on those European type of options, what is the impact of those model parameters on these jumps uh, on the implied volatilities? So what the parameter impact on implied volatilities? In the case of a Merton model, where we consider normal distribution for our uh, variable j, where we have a mu j and sigma j squared, we have three parameters, intensity for the Poisson process, uh, sigma j, so this is the, vari the volatility for the uh, for j, so this is this parameter, and we have also uh, the size, so whether we have more positive jumps, so it's a mean of normal distribution, whether it's positive or negative, it tells us the, whether we have more negative or, posit or positive jumps. So let's look at the analysis here or the impact of the parameters on implied volatilities. So we keep parameters fixed and we vary one by one. So here in the first graph, we have a sigma j that's modified while the rest of the parameters are fixed. We see if we increase sigma j, so the volatility uncertainty of our variable j, of our jump j, then it has two types of impacts. The first if the j is very small, it's basically we have uh, almost no, uh, we have a flat case, so it's a Black-Scholes case. If uh, sigma j increases, it introduces, it changes the level. Of course, we have more uncertainty, more volatility in the framework. So level has to go up. And then at some point, we also see there is a smile effect. So by adding jumps, simple jumps with a Poisson process and jump component J, then we can actually in introduce smile into the Black-Scholes model. Then if we control the intensity of jumps, so if the intensity is uh, a zero, effectively means there's no jumps at all, so no events of, uh, of J that can be incorporated, then we have still Black-Scholes case. And then if we increase intensity, it has mainly impact on uh, on the level. So the more volatility takes place. However, it is kind of a parallel shift of volatilities because you see there's not so much impact on skews or smiles. It is very much parallel. And then the final parameter mu j, so this parameter here, um, we see that actually if we have this parameter first, first two are negative and the rest is positive. If we have negative parameter, more negative, then we see we have more and more skew in the model. So in the case where we would have a, a model or market where it's only skew, then we would just keep your mu j, our mu j uh, uh, fixed, so negative and fixed, and that would allow us to calibrate to implied volatility skews. Of course, it is a little bit of a, a, a tricky part because um, we need not to calibrate only to smile or skew, but always we need to have calibration at, at the money level. So what we have to do, we have to always ensure that at the money level is well calibrated. So this is our the most important part of calibration. If we calibrate it at the money, then we should rotate or we should change the model parameters such that the at, the at the money level is fit. So in this case, if we have a case where there is a lot of skew in the market, then we would make our mu j more negative. And at the same time, we would maybe play with uh, other two parameters. So for example, psi, uh, psi p, that we will increase the level. So if the skew is more, there is a level goes down, and then we can compensate that effect, that impact, by changing other parameters. So that we could have interplay between model parameters such that we could have at the money level fit, and at the same time, we could target to calibrate our implied volatility uh, skew. What is also important that in time, if, we have, uh, if uh, our process continues, uh, then we will also notice that smile or skew effects, which comes from jump, they will flatten out in time. So this is another takeaway. But overall, by adding jumps, we can incorporate skew in our model, also to some extent smile. However, the smile effect is always much less pronounced than the skew effect. And the skew effect or the implied volatility effect, which comes from jumps, will be always the most pronounced for short maturities. So if expiry of our option goes to zero, then we will see the most impact of adding jumps in our diffusion model. For large times, this impact of jumps will be deteriorating in time. And this is actually what we always want. In market, we typically see a lot of implied volatility skew, 
uh, for short maturity options. And then the skew flattens out, then becomes much more uh, moder uh, modest. So it becomes flatter and flatter or smiles. But always there is most of the action in terms of implied volatilities taking place at the short maturity options. I hope it explains. See you next time. Bye bye.